Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I still remain your mathematics teacher, Mr. NWC Ephraim. Today, we shall be looking at the topic, algebraic expression for the junior category. So we are going to be having a comprehensive look at this particular topic. It will be coming in stages. I advise that you click on the subscribe button so that you'll be able to have notification of these videos as they come on. So we shall be looking at use of symbols today, use of letters, and also the coefficient of algebraic terms. Now let's begin with the use of symbols. But before we start, let's understand what an algebra is all about. Algebra is a branch of mathematics that deals with the use of numbers and letters together. So most of the time you see questions that comes in this form, whereby they will write something like 6y, was 4x you can see from this expression we have number and we have letter put together so it is called an algebraic term so when we talk about algebraic expression this is a perfect example of it because it is made up of what numbers and letters put together that is exactly what we call the algebraic expression we shall be discussing the equation whereby we will now be having something like this 2x is equal to 8 this is an algebraic equation. It becomes an equation when an equal sign is introduced. But when there is no equal sign there, it remains what? An expression. So let's get started. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that you'll be able to get the subsequent videos of this particular lesson. Now let's get started. Use of symbols. Just like I said, that algebra is made up of numbers and letters put together sometimes we use symbols to represent these numbers we use letters sometimes to represent these numbers so we call them variables because they are representations of numbers now let's take a look at the first one we have here use of symbols you can see i use boxes some other person can use something like symbol of a car the symbol of a shirt and, re and the rest of them to represent a number now, taking a look at the examples we have here, the question says, find the value in the box that makes the expressions true. Number one, we have box plus three equal to 15. Number two, box minus eight equal to 20. Number three, box multiplied by six equal to 30. And lastly, 24 divided by a box equal to eight. All right, so let's get the solution of the first one. Number one, we have box plus tray equal to 15. What the question is saying is that we should find a number that when we put it here and add it to tray, it will give us 15. What number goes into this box that when added to tray, that gives us 15? That is exactly what the question is talking about. But look at how we are going to be approaching it. All right, so what we are going to be doing here is that the numbers we have to move to one side of the equality sign. So when plus move across the other side of the equality sign, it turns to become minus. I repeat again. When a positive sign crosses the other side of the equality sign, the sign changes. If it is plus like this one, when it goes to the other side, it becomes what? Minus. If it is minus, like in the case of the second one, when it goes to the other side, it becomes what? Plus. Take that into hand. Now let's take a look at this. That will now be box equal to 15. Then plus 3. Moving on across the equal sign, what does it become? Becomes what? Minus 3. Then the answer will now look this way. 15 minus 3 that gives us what? 12. And 12 becomes the solution that enters into this box to make the statement true. So if I insert 12 here yeah? and when i say 12 plus 3 that will give us what 15 so therefore 12 is the number that goes into the box to make the statement true i hope this is very clear all right so i believe you can give number two a try to find out the number that when it goes into the box and you subtract it from it that will give us 20. now let's take a look at that particular solution number two Solution number two. Here we have box 
minus 8 equal to 20. All right. So as you can see from this particular one, we have minus 8. So minus 8 will have to move to the other side. And when it crosses the equal sign, the sign changes automatically. And what does the sign change to? That changes to become what? Addition. So that will not be box is equal to 20 is already here. Then minus 8 crosses the equal sign to become what? Plus 8. So what will not be the answer to the question? 20 plus 8, that gives us what? 28. So 28 is the number that goes into this box to make it a true statement. So if I put 28 here, when I say 28 minus 8, that gives us what? 20. That makes the statement to be what? True. Now let's take a look at number 3. Probably you can still give it a try. Pause the video and give it a try. Then number 3. Number 3. Here we have box multiplied by 6 equals 30. Take for example, if we have something like this, 3 multiplied by 4, what does it give? That gives us what? 12. Assuming this number 4 is not given, how do I find it? I can simply say 12 divided by 3 to provide what? 4. Or if I'm looking for 3, how do I get this? That would not be 12 divided by 4. That will give me what? 3. So that's exactly the approach we are going to be using here. So to get the answer to this, that would not be box is equal to 30 divided by 6. So the solution of the box will not be 30 divided by 6 will give us what? 5. So therefore, 5 is the number that goes into this box to make the statement true. Therefore, when we now say 5 multiplied by 6, the answer will be what? 30. That makes it a true statement. I hope that is quite clear. Now, let's move to the next one. Number 4. Number 4, here we have... 24 divided by Burks, that's an unknown, equal to 8. Assuming we have something like this, 12 divided by 3, what do you think the answer will be? Of course, the answer will be 4. Assuming this place is not given, assuming this place is not given, how do we get this answer? How do we get this answer? That would not be 12 divided by 4. That will produce 3 here for us. That is just the perfect way of approaching this. So to get the answer to this, what do we say? The box will not be 24 divided by 8. That gives us what? 3. Automatically, that becomes the answer to the question. So 3 is the statement that goes into this box. Because when we say 24 divided by 3, of course, the answer will be what? 8. And those are the solutions to the use of symbols regarding algebraic expression. Now, let's move to the other side and have a look at the use of letters. As you can see, we make use of letters here. In mathematics, we do call the substitution method because this alphabet X is to be represented by a number 4. Just like I told you before, that some of these symbols uh, and uh, letters represent a number. We call them variables. They are variables because the number varies. The alphabet could represent 2, could represent 3, could represent any number. That's why we call it variables. Now, let's take a look at the solution to this particular one. Solutions. Uh, here we have 2x plus 3x. The question says, evaluate the following if the value of x equal to what? 4. What it means is that wherever we find x in all this expression, we should use what to replace it. We use 4 to replace x wherever we find it in any of the expressions. Now let's get to substitute that. That will give us 2. What do we substitute x to be? That will be equal to 4. Or to say, assuming x is equal to 4. Then plus 3. What do we know x to be? 
that is 4. So the solution will now look this way. 2 times 4, that gives us 8. 3 times 4, that gives us what, 12. So the final solution to this, 8 plus 12, will give us what? 20. And that is the final solution to this particular one. Then going by number 2, in number 2 we have x minus 8. Of course, x represented by what? 4. So that will now be 4 in place of x minus 8. 4 minus 8, what will be the answer? I know some people will say the answer is 4. Of course, the answer is not 4. Let's take, for example, if you have uh, 9 minus 3, what would that give us? That would give us a positive 6. What we call this is positive difference. It becomes a positive difference when a bigger number minuses a smaller number. That will give you a positive answer. I'll call it positive difference. But when you have it in this form, 3 minus 9, what will be the answer? Of course, the answer is going to be negative of the answer, minus 6. Because the small number minus a big number will give you a negative difference of that particular solution. I believe from here you can guess what the answer to this number 2 will be. Then 4 minus 8. Of course, that will give us minus 4 because it's a negative difference. 4 is a smaller number, subtracting 8. So that's the end of the use of symbols and use of letters as it concerns algebraic expression. Now we talk about the coefficients of algebraic terms. The coefficients of an algebraic term. For example, if you have something like 7 multiplied by m, what would it give us? 7m. So if someone asks you, what number do you multiply to m to give you 7m? Of course, their number is what? 7. So the coefficients of this m is the 7 that is attached to it. And the coefficients of 7 is m. We normally get this coefficient by virtue of product. That is multiplication between two numbers. If we have something like this, 5 multiplied by h, that will give us 5h. What is the coefficient of h? 5. And what is the coefficient of 5? h. So when it becomes a product, the letters and the numbers are the coefficients of one another. So that's how to identify the coefficients of algebraic Terms. Now, let's have a look at some of the questions we have on the board. Here, number one. What is the coefficient of x here? Of course, the answer is what? 6. Then, the coefficient of 2x over 3. When you look at the question, it can also be write, written this way. That will now be 2 over 3 multiplied by x over 1. So, having a look at this, 2 times x will, of course, give us 2x. 3 times 1 will give us 3. So, the coefficients of x here is 2 over 3. Because 2 over 3, when it then multiply to x, that will give us 2x over 3. So, the answer to this question will now be 2 over 3. Because when you multiply x to 2 over 3, that will give us 2x over 3, as you can see here. So the answer to this, the coefficients of x in this particular one is 2 over 3. If I should give you a question like this, 7y over 9, what do you think will be the coefficients of y here? Of course, the answer will be what? 7 over 9. That will be the answer to the question. Now, let's take a look at the next one. The next one we have is 4 minus 2y. When you look at the two of them, 4 is not is of less importance to this question because 4 does not have the letter y. We are talking about the number that is being multiplied to this y to make it minus 2y. Because what we have here is minus 2y. Not just 2y, but what? Minus 2y. So the coefficients of y is the number that is attached to it by multiplication. And that number is minus 2. So the coefficients of y here... The answer is what? Minus 2. If you ask some students, they will tell you their answer is 2. The answer can never be 2. The answer can only be 2 if you have y here. That will not be of the same like term. So 4y can minus 2y. That will give us 2y. And the coefficients in that case becomes what? 2. But since this 4 does not have y, then it's of no use to the equation. 
I hope it's quite clear. Now we move to the next one. That is number four. Question number four, just like the way we treated number three. 4x minus 2. The one that is of our concern is the number that is attached to x. Okay, so the number that is attached to x is what? 4. Well, 4 times x will give us 4x. So this minus 2 is none of our business in as far as this question is concerned because there is no x attached to it. So it's not going to affect our answer. So you can say 4x minus 2. Both of them cannot mass minus each other. It's just like someone saying, remove two bananas from the oranges. Of course, there are no oranges. <clears throat> I mean, a bananas inside the bag of orange. So you cannot be able to remove a banana from inside a basket of oranges because there are no bananas inside that basket of oranges. Likewise, this particular one here, you have 4x. This one has nothing to do with x. Of course, the answer is going to be what? 4. So the coefficients of x here is what? 4. All right. So, and the answer is not going to be 2. You know the reason. If we have x here, that's when your answer is going to be 2 because in that case, both of them are now like times. So you can subtract between the two. So 4x minus 2x will give us what? 2 in that sense. Okay. So, but the answer here is what? 4 because our 2 here has nothing to do with what? x. All right, so coming to this one, is a different approach altogether because the two numbers are bearing the same letter. So in that case, we are going to bring them together. Two three y plus five y that will give us what eight y. That give us eight y. So what's the answer to this? The coefficients of y here is what eight. Of course, eight is the answer to the question. Now looking at this one, the coefficients of x here, I can rewrite this to be one over nine multiplied by x over 1. This particular expression here can still give me the same answer here, of which when I say 1 times x, that will give me x. 9 times 1 will give me 9. So the coefficients of x here is what? 1 over 9. So can you tell me the answer to this? x over 5. What is the coefficients of x here? Of course, I know somebody may have gotten the answer. The answer will be what? 1 over 5. And that is the coefficient of that particular uh, expression there. So that is all about the coefficients of terms of algebra. These are your assignments. Uh, the first one there says find the value in the box that makes the statements true. Number one, you have a uh, box plus 15 equal to 75 number two box minus 30 equal to 100 number three 70 divided by box equal to five then number four box multiplied by eight equal to 48 then the other side of it evaluate the following if y equal to eight number five seven y minus two y number six five plus five y then the other one says identify the coefficients of x and y in the following. Number 7, you have 15x. Number 8, you have 13y over 20. Um, finally, number 9, you have x. Try to do this in your rough book, not in your major notebook for mathematics. See you in our next video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Next video, you'll be able to have uh, other aspects of algebra that we haven't discussed. Have a beautiful day ahead.